last lecture we have seen uh, how to carry out unsigned multiplication. So, we continue our discussion to the present lecture. So, today we shall see how we can carry out signed multiplication, multiplication of two numbers which can be either positive or negative specifically in close complement form. So, how we can do that? So, our topic of discussion today is signed multiplication. So, the first approach that we talk about is a simple extension of the basic shift and add multiplication method that we have already seen. But here there is one important difference like depending on the sign of your multiplier or the multiplicand. So, you will have to sign extend all the partial products. Now, you recall earlier uh, it was discussed that any signed number can be sign extended to any number of bits. So, what is the rule for sign extension for two complement numbers? If the number is positive, you can fill the number with as many zeros you want. If the number is negative, you can fill it with any number of ones you want. Like for example, 0 0 1 1 represents plus 3 in 4 bits. Suppose you require to represent it in 8 bits, you simply add 4 zeros in the beginning. That means, you are simply extending the sign of the number to these additional bits. Let us take another example 1 0 0 1, this represents minus 7 in two's complement. So, if you again want to represent it in 8 bits, so what you do similarly, you look at this sign, it is 1, you replicate the sign bit here, this is called sign extension. So, the value of the number remains same in this process, right. Okay. So, this is actually what you have to do. So, the example is shown here also, let us say a number 0101, this is a positive number, you can sign extend it to 8 bits, sign extend it to 16 bits, sign extend to 32 bits like this. Similarly, a negative number sign extend to 8 bits, to 16 bits, to 32 bits. Just replicate the sign sign bit as many times you want. So, in the shift and add extension for sign numbers, we just use this principle. Just look at it. So, we are multiplying minus 12 is the multiplicand which is a negative number with a multiplier which is positive let us say plus 26. So, we are representing them by 6, 6 bit numbers. So, the result is supposed to be 12 bits twice of that. So, when the first bit is 0, 0 multiplied by this will be 0. So, we are sign extending it by adding 6 zeros in the beginning to make it a 12 bit partial product. Next is 1. So, we add this this is negative that is why we do a sign extension with all 1s. Next is again 0, 0 sign extension, next is 1, 1 this multiplicand sign extension, next one again 1 multiplicand sign extension, last 0, 0 sign extension. So, if you add this bits up now, you will see that what you have got is this, if you convert it to decimal, you see that this is indeed minus 286, which is the product. So, this simple shift and add we can extend by using this sum extension concept, extending this uh, sign, sign extension. So, you will be getting correct result uh, means in terms of the sign of the product. And another thing I just mentioned earlier also, we are also assuming one thing that in case of multiplication, since we are assuming that two n bit numbers are being multiplied to generate a two n bit product, so overflow can never occur here. 
because the product can be at most 2 n bits long, right? Not more than that. Okay. Okay. Now we look at some improvement to this basic algorithm that we have just now seen. Now, in the shift and add method, if you just recall the basic mechanism what we are doing, our multiplier and multiplier are both n bit numbers. We are repeating the process n times, inspecting 1 bits of the multiplier every time. We are either adding the multiplicand or adding the 0. So, we need n number of addition steps and n number of shifting steps that is required in the basic shift and add method. Now, what we discuss here is that essentially this is also a type of a shift and add multiplier, but we are trying to reduce the number of addition steps by using some kind of a you can say bit encoding technique. So, the method we talk about now is called Booth's algorithm and Booth's algorithm can be used for signed numbers also, those complement multiplication. So, as I have just now said in the conventional shift and add multiplier for n bit multiplication, we have to repeat the process for every bit n times. You either add 0 or the multiplicand to the partial product at every iteration and also you shift. So, we need n additions and n shift operations. And as I have said in Booth's algorithm, we are trying to avoid additions wherever possible. Very specifically, whenever there are consecutive zeros or consecutive ones in the multiplier, we avoid additions. This can make the process faster. Okay. Let us look at the basic idea. See here again, we look at the numbers in the same way. We assume that we have a temporary register called A, we have a quotient register Q. So, initially the quotient register is loaded with the quotients. So, it will be Q n minus 1 dot 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 Q 2, Q 1 and Q 0. Now, here we are adding another single bit register a flip flop, this we are calling as q minus 1 and for reason that we will see very shortly. In both algorithm, we do not look at one bit of the multiplier at a time, but rather we look at pairs of bits okay, q i and q i minus 1 for all i. So, you see earlier we are looking at q 0 first, then q 1, then q 2, but now we shall be looking at pairs q 0, q u minus 1 that is why this additional bit we have kept, then q 1, q 0, then q 2, q 1, then q 3, q 2 and so on, pairs of bits, right. This is the basic idea. Because of this pairing, we need to add another flip flop at the end which is initialized to 0. Right? Now, the rule of multiplication is very simple. We look at these pairs of bits. So, if the bits are the same either 0 0 or 1 1, no need to do any addition or subtraction, just only shift the partial product. If the bits are 0 0, then we do a equal to a plus m, do an addition and then do a right shift. If the bits are 1 0, do a subtraction a equal to a minus m and then a right shift. See here I am not going into the formal proof of the Booth's algorithm. The method looks very simple. So, if you work out you can also verify that whatever you are doing here is actually carrying out multiplication. Okay? But here I am not going into the formal proof, I am just stating the Booth's algorithm and how it can be implemented. right? So, by doing this whenever we find 0 0s or 1 1s in the bit pairs, 
we avoid addition or subtraction right. So, this can significantly reduce the number of additions or subtractions. Now, in some textbooks we will see that instead of looking at these bit pairs, they have used an alternate notation called Booth's encoding. They have used the symbols plus 1, minus 1 and 0 to indicate the status of these bit pairs, whether they are changing or not changing. If the bits are 0 and 1, you code it as plus 1, if it is 1 0, you call it minus 1, if it is 0 0 or 1 1, it does not change, you call it as 0. And this already I have said that for coding the last bit, we assume that that extra flip flop q minus 1 that we have added here, this is initialized to 0, right, this is initialized to 0. So, let us take some examples of this booth encoding technique. Suppose my multiplier was this. So, there will be an additional 0 here that q minus 1. So, 0 0 is coded as 0, this 0 0 is coded as 0, this 0 0 0 0 2 more zeros. 1 and 0 will be coded as minus 1, 1 1 will be coded as 0, 1 1 will be coded as 0. 0 1 is coded as plus 1. So, see essentially looking from right to left 0 means in this encoded encoding scheme 0 means that we need only shifting no addition or subtraction minus 1 means we need a subtraction plus 1 means we need an addition. Another example so last 2 bits are 0 0 that is 0 1 0 is minus 1 1 1 0 0 1 is plus 1. 1 0 is minus 1, 1 1 1 1 0 0 plus 0 1 is 0. Now, the last example, this is the worst case for both algorithm alternating zeros and 1s. So, you will find here you have not got any zeros, all are plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 alternately like that. So, you will have to always do either an addition or subtraction at every step. So, this is the worst case of both algorithm, but on the average you may have to do additions which are much less. For example, for the C case, you need only two addition or subtractions, rest are all zeros. So, the Booth's algorithm goes like this in a flowchart form. So, I have already shown you that A is a register n bit, this m holds the multiplicand, q holds the multiply, these are all n bit and q minus 1 is a 1 bit flip flop initialized to 0. So, you inspect q 0 and q minus 1 every time. So, if it is 0 1, then you have to add, if it is 1 0, you have to subtract, but if it is 0 0 or 1 1, you do not have to add or subtract. So, what you will have to do? You will have to shift anyway, shift what? Shift this a, this q and this q i minus 1 all together shift all the three things together, right. So, the earlier q 0 will go into q 1, q 1 will go into q 0. So, every time you will be checking q 0 and q minus 1 only. So, after shifting, this will ensure that you are inspecting all the bit pairs. And after doing the right shift, a q and q minus 1, decrement the count it is initialized to n, you check whether you have checked all the n times you have done, if it is 0, no, if it is yes, you stop. So, so, so the algorithm is fairly simple. So, let us work out uh, some examples. So, as I said, if there are consecutive 0s and 1s, no addition or subtractions are needed. So, you can skip over those runs of 0s and 1s. Let us take an example. So, multiplicand is negative minus 10. So, minus 10 is uh, 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 this uh, 13, this is 13, this m is 1 0 1 1 0, minus m is the truth complement that this is 0 1 0 1 0. So, what I will do whenever I have to subtract, I will actually add minus m that is equivalent to subtracting m. 
so I am showing both m and also minus m. So, here the product will be sorry it will be minus 130 that is minus minus 130 yeah the product is minus 130. So, this is our initial thing q loaded with the quotient a is 0 and q minus 1 also 0. We check the base pair it is 1 0. So, 1 0 means you have to subtract a equal to a minus m. So, you are adding minus m to a minus m is 0 1 0 1 0 it becomes 0 1 0 1 0. Then you do a shift. Now, the next bit pair is 0 1 0 1 means you have to add you add m to 0 0 1 0 1. So, the result will be this 1 1 0 1 1 then you do a shift again. Now, the next two bits are again 1 0. So, 1 0 means you have to subtract. So, add 0 1 0 0 again to it. It becomes this. So, again do a shifting. Next bit pair is 1 1. So, just skip no addition or subtraction just shifting. Next bit pair is 0 1. So, if you have to do an addition, so add m to this, it becomes 1 0 1 1 1, then do a shift. So, whatever you have finally is the result product, this is minus 130, right. So, this is the process of Bush multiplication. So, it is very similar to shift and add, the only decision is that you have added an addition bit q minus 1, you are checking 2 bits at a time, and sometimes you are skipping addition or subtraction step doing only shift. Let us take another example minus 31 and 28, this is your quotient and this is your multiplicand minus m is this. So, the product is supposed to be again it should be minus I missed the minus sign minus 868 which is this. So, you check the last two bits 0 0. So, only shift no addition next two bits are again 0 0. So, only shift 1 0 means a subtraction. So, we add minus m then shift again 1 1 no addition subtraction only shift. So, so again 1 1 just only shift finally, you have 0 1 means addition add m to this you will get this and then a shift. So, you are done this will be your final result minus 868. So, you see that both algorithm is simple in this example you have seen that you are able to skip 1 2 3 4 times only twice you needed to do some addition or subtraction. Okay. So, this method is significantly faster as compared to the previous shift and add multiplication method. In terms of the hardware requirement, it is very similar you need a A register, a Q register and one additional Q minus 1 flip flop here and earlier you needed only an adder, but now we have an adder or subtractor because sometimes you also need to add. And here while you are doing a right shift like in the previous example, when you are doing a right shift you are doing an arithmetic right shift. So, the sign bit would be replicated. So, that sign bit is coming back when you are right shifting. This is for arithmetic right shift and the control unit will be checking both q 0 and q minus 1 together and will decide whether to add or subtract or whether to skip this step. So, the control signals will be generated accordingly right. Fine. Now, let us look at how we can improve the speed of the multiplier even further. We have already seen how both multiplier can reduce the number of additions or subtractions. Now, we look at a modification of both, both multiplier here, this is called bit pair recording of both multiplier. So, this method effectively halve the maximum number of addition or subtraction the idea is like this. So, in both algorithm we have seen for that 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 multiplied scenario, 
in the worst case you need n multiplications or divisions multiplication or subtraction sub I mean, addition subtraction right sorry so in this new method modified bit pair recording what you are saying is that the worst case maximum number of addition and subtraction will be only n by 2 50 percent of what was there earlier so we are reducing the worst case complexity of addition subtraction to almost half 50 percent. So, the observations are like this. So, in the original booth encoding what we have seen, let us say we have two symbols plus 1 minus 1 one after the other. Okay. Plus 1 means what addition, minus 1 means what subtraction of m. Now, plus 1 coming before means that I have to make one shift left shift m left shift of m means 2 into m and then we subtract m. So, plus 1 minus 1 both operating on m means effectively 2 into m minus m because this plus 1 will be shift left by one place effectively it, it means multiplied by multiplying by 2 and minus 1 will be lower significant minus m. So, effectively this means m. You also observe if you have a pair 0 plus 1 0 plus 1 also means m because you multiply by m in the lower place, in the higher place it is 0 you do not do anything, it remains same. So, the final result of these two are equivalent same. So, wherever you have plus 1 minus 1 you can as well replace them by 0 plus 1, which means you have brought in an addition 0 which means 1 less addition or subtraction. There are other similar rules you can frame. So, we are showing the rules here in the next slide. So, just like that we have shown here you can similarly try this out, you can also prove these rules similarly. Plus 1 and 0, they can be encoded as 0 plus 2 means here you are multiplying by 2. So, this new symbol plus 2 and minus 2 comes in in this new method. Plus 2 means shift by one position. Uh, this uh, minus 1 plus 1 if there are you replace them by 0 minus 1, 0 0 does not change, 0 1 does not change, plus 1 1 I mean you cannot do this, this, this is not a valid occurrence, plus 1 minus 1 can be replaced by 0 plus 1 this already we have seen and minus 1 0 can be replaced by 0 minus 1. That means, you see so, in the modified encoding at least one 0 is there, which means at most 50 percent times you will be doing addition or subtraction, rest all times you will be doing shifting. So, this reduces the worst case time required by the both multiplication algorithm. So, let us take an example plus 13 multiplied by minus 22. So, the original multiplier minus 22 was this, this is minus 22 in two's complement. So, if you do both and this encoding, this is 0 0 is 0, 1 0 is minus 1, 0 1 is plus 1, 1 0 is minus 1, 0 1 plus 1, 1 0 is minus 1. Now, according to this new rules, whatever I have shown in the table, you replace like for example, minus 1 0, this table shows minus 1 0 can be replaced by 0 minus 2 minus 1 0 replaced by 0 minus 2. You look at pairwise minus 1 plus 1, minus 1 plus 1 you replace by 0 minus 1, replace 0, minus 1 plus 1 replace by 0 minus 1. So, now this is your new booth recorded coding. So, 0 means you have to not do an addition subtraction. So, here I am showing them by dots the zeros. These are the places where you have to do addition or subtraction. So, you need only 3 means addition steps required here, minus 2 you do minus 2 m shift and then multiply, multiply in the shift, minus 1 just the operand you see plus 13 1 0 0 1 1 minus 1 1 0 0 1 1, but here because it was minus 2, so after 1 0 1 1 we have done a left shift, left shift means multiplied by 2. So, 1 0 1 1 was minus 1, if you left it by 1 it becomes minus 2. 
So, you see the process of multiplication becomes much simpler here, only 3 steps required, the other 3 steps you can skip. So, this is what I have said minus 1 into m means this, minus 2 into m means shift left by 1 position. So, a 0 goes in here. Fine. And the last kind of multiplier that we talk about here is called carry safe multiplier. See earlier we looked at carry safe adder. We have seen that we can use carry safe adder to add several numbers mean without any carry propagation we are adding the carry only in the last, last stage. And also we have seen in the combinational array multiplier that the partial product generation requires n square n gates. So, what we say here is that we can use a tree of carry safe, carry safe adders to multiply the n partial products to, to add them up to add the n partial products we need a carry save adder tree. Now, you see what we saw for carry save adder is that a single carry save adder can add up to 3 numbers. If you want to add more number of numbers like 4, 5, 6, you will require several carry save adders. Now, for multiplication also there will be n partial product, you will have to add all those n partial products. So, you can have a similar carry save adder tree where all those n partial products you are adding and finally, at the end you get the final product. Okay. So, here we show an example for a 4 by 4 multiplier. So, these are independent full adders at every step, the first two stages indicate carry save adders, there are no connection in between. So, you see that all the partial product generated by the AND gates are fed here. This is m 1 q 0, m 0 q 1, m 0 q 2, m 1 q 1, m 2 q 0. So, just if you can check you will see that exactly the same thing is happening. And when the carry of the out carry output is going to next stage you are doing a 1 bit shift and then connecting. So, that the shifting can be implemented and some of the product terms are generated directly for example, m 0 q 0 means the LSB of the product, the first full adder can generate p 1 the next bit, this full adder can generate p 2, but in the last stage you will be needing a regular adder with carry propagation. So, here I have shown a ripple carry adder, this can also be a carry look at adder no problem. So, this will be generating the remaining 5 bits of the product. So, if we have a circuit like this, you can carry out multiplication much faster okay, using carry save adders. So, you have an alternate method called Wallace tree, Wallace tree is very similar in concept. So, Wallace tree is a circuit, it is a like a tree, in general it is a graph that reduces the problem of summing n numbers to the problem of summing two numbers which are of size theta of n. So, this also uses carry save adders, it uses the floor of n by 3, so many carry save adders to convert this sum of n numbers to this sum of ceiling of 2 n by 3 numbers. So, we are not going into the detail of these mathematics, we shall just show some example Wallace tree formula formulation for a particular multiplier. So, the advantage is that finally, that using many carry save addition in parallel Wallace tree will allow 2 n bit numbers to be multiplied in theta log n time. This is important, you are having a logarithmic time multiplier but the circuit complexity will become n square theta of n square. So, this is one Wallace tree example that I am showing which is adding 8 partial products m 0, m 1 up to m 7. Suppose, we are doing 8 by 8 multiplication. So, the final result should be 16 base. So, these numbers beside these edges will indicate number of bits that are being 
generated here. This will also be 13, sorry, 30, this is also 13. So, these are the partial products, these are the carry save array 3 you generate, some of the carry save address are working in parallel you see, these are in parallel, these two are in parallel, but these two are in sequential and finally, you have a parallel adder. This is a so called Wallace tree multiplier that also uses carry save adder tree. So, what Wallace tree says, it is a particular way of arranging the carry save adders, so that maximum amount of parallelism can be exploited and the depth of the tree is reduced. So, how many carry save adders maximum can be used? This is just an example I have shown. Okay. So, with this we come to the end of this lecture. So, um, we have so far looked at the design of adders and multipliers. So, one thing is left among the basic arithmetic um, operations namely division. So, in the next lecture we shall be looking at some algorithms for division and how they can be implemented. Thank you.